In this video series, you will learn how to read and conceptualize every single kanji for the JLPT N5. We will go over the kunyomi and onyomi readings, as well as some common non-standard readings as well. The goal of this series is to provide you with not only a fun way to learn kanji, but also provide real contextual examples of how the kanji is used and how it appears in Japanese media. With the next 10 kanji that we're going to cover in this video, we will learn the kanji readings for 571 of the 10,000 most useful word lists according to kanshudo.com. So with just this video alone, you will learn how to read almost another 6% of the most useful words just by the end of this video. This video is brought to you by all of the amazing supporters on Patreon and help from the members of the Game Gengo Discord community. So if you like this kind of thing, feel free to check out the Game Gengo Patreon and support the channel. So without Without further ado, let's get started. Wait, where are you? I'm going to take my hand to my country. I don't have to change anything. So this kanji here has quite a few different ways of reading, depending on both the context it appears in and the other kanji it appears next to. Now, when used by itself, like seen here in its kunyomi reading, kuni, this is the word for country or land or even world just by itself. Kuni means country. Like seen here in Berserk, where Griffith tells Guts that he told him once before, nothing has changed he will obtain his own country. Ore no kuni. My own country. Here with its first onyomi reading of koku from okoku, and even seen here in ikoku. Both of these examples are referring to a type of country or land. The first example with Okoku, this is a word for kingdom, or a land which is ruled by royalty, like seen here in Super Mario Galaxy. With the second example showing this kanji used in the word Ikoku, meaning a foreign land. I here is used to represent something foreign and koku for land. So both uses here are referring to a land or country, whether a kingdom or a foreign land. This koku reading has two common variations that you may see it read as. The first seen here from Dragon Ball Z in the word for heaven, Tengoku. So here the word koku is read as goku, Tengoku. And we can see that compared to koku's 58 words that it appears in the top 10,000 word list, goku is less common here seen in just eight words. Next is ko, here with the gap sound represented with the small tsu when often used in front of other words, like seen here for kokyo, national border. Again, we see it's used to represent this image of a country or a land, and in combination with kyo, which is often used to express borders or boundaries, so a country Border is the national border between countries, and so Kokyo is a national border. So we can see that this kanji is quite simple in its concept, with both its kunyomi of kuni, as well as its onyomi readings for koku and goku. All of these are used to express a land, a country, or sometimes even another world. Whether a kingdom, or koku, a foreign country, ikoku, the world of heaven, Tengoku, or simply just the word for a country, kuni. The next kanji we have here seen with its wide variety of kunyomi readings starts with 
Ue, the word for up. Here referring to the city of Midgar that is up or above or on the plates. So the city above the plates. And it can also be used in combination with other kanji as well, like seen here in the formal way to refer to one's father. The normal way of saying father would just be chichi or otosan, but chichiue shows a kind of level of formal respect towards your father with this ue, showing that he's in a position above you. And you can do this as well with, for example, your mother, instead of just haha, you can say haha ue. The next kunyomi reading is ua, for the verb to exceed. Usually, this is used when talking about figures and numbers, with uamawaru. But it can also be seen a part of words, like for example, uagi, for a coat or a jacket. With both examples, you can still feel this image of something up or above, like to exceed above, or for your upper body wear, like a jacket. <laughs> It is also often read as a when coming before the kana for geru and garu, so like ageru and agaru, for the transitive and intransitive forms of going up or rising, like seen here in Sekiro, to raise your head. Omote o ageru. One of the meanings of ageru is to raise or elevate something. So here the main character is being asked to raise his head. But that's not all. When coming before just a ru or a ri, this kanji is often read as noboru or nobori. Like seen here in Okami, with going up this hill. Koko noboru, to climb up here. And finally, it also has a rather rare reading of kami, occasionally used when talking about the upper government, upper parts of a stream, or simply here in the part of a place's name, kamiagata. Now, one thing to note is that this is actually the northern part of the map, so perhaps this has some sort of connection to that, where it's the upper part, the upper prefecture of this island. Next, we have the Onyomi reading of jaw. This appears in 47 of the 10,000 useful words, like seen here with ijo and chojo. The first example, ijo, means more than, like seen here in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, with kore ijo more than this. Dekinai, he cannot do. So he cannot do more than this. So the first reading of jo is a part of the word more than. And another example with cho jo, which here means the summit or the very top of something. Cho represents a peak and jo represents the top of that peak. So as we can see, this kanji has an incredibly large number of readings from the kunyomi ue, ua, a in ageru, nobo in noboru, and even kami, as well as the onyomi reading of jo. In all of these examples though, we can see a general feeling of up. Kore ijo, more than this. Chojo, the summit or the peak. Ue, just the word for up. 
Chichiwe wants father, Uamawaru to exceed, Uagi wants up aware, Ageru to raise, and even Kamiyagata, a place name which just so happens to be the upper part of the island Tsushima. So first up we have the Kunyomi reading of Wa, commonly seen in the word Wakaru for understanding, to understand something, and it's a very common word that most beginners are taught very early in their studies. This kanji is quite often used for Wakaru, but just be aware that at times you may see it written without any kanji at all, or you may even see it written with a different kanji altogether. However, when you understand someone or something on a feeling basis, or you sympathize with something, generally this kanji is used for that situation. Wakaru. An interesting note with the wa reading is that it also appears in the word wakeru, which means to divide something, as in put it into parts, so to split it up. So here, even with this reading, we can see this concept of part appear. Next, we have the onyomi reading for this very common kanji, seen here in the word kyo no bun, used here referring to one's part, one's allotment, or one's amount of something. Here seen in Nino Kuni, it is referring to the amount for today, kyo no bun. So this is referring to perhaps the amount that he needs to take to deliver somewhere. This reading is the most used reading in various different words for this kanji, with it appearing in 51 of the top 10,000 useful words. Round one. Fight. This kanji also has a few other onyomi readings, like seen here with two minutes. Nifun here meaning two minutes. The reading here this time is fun instead of bun, and this fun reading can actually be further changed depending on the number of minutes. For example, ippun means one minute, but this time the fun turns into a pun. So ni fun, two minutes, sampun, three minutes, go fun, five minutes, and so on. <laughs> There's another variation here of fu seen as bu, like here in the word daibu, the word for considerably, where Snake is saying that he has considerably gotten used to the area. Daibu nareta. While this word means considerably, you could also do a literal translation for kind of like, for the most part. So you've gotten used to it for the most part. You've considerably gotten used to it. While this word is often just read in kana, occasionally you will see it read in kanji, like here in Metal Gear Solid. So this kanji is a little bit more complex in the way that it appears. We have bun for part, lot, or share of something, fun and pun often seen used with time, like ni fun or sampun, and we even see it read as bu, like in daibu, for the most part or considerably. And then finally, it's read in its kunyomi form as wa, like in wakaru for understanding something or someone, and wakeru for dividing something or putting it into parts. So the big key meaning here is clearly part, whether one's parts, the part of time, for the most part, or even putting something into parts. Namaneku. The next kanji we have here is one of the kanji with the most amount of readings in not only the N5 level, but also the entire JLPT. Here seen with nine different kunyomi and onyomi readings in the top 10k, but even more outside of it. Starting off first with the most common of the readings, nama, the word for something being raw or fresh. Like when you come across raw meat, Nama Niku, as seen here in Witcher 3. So this meat is not cooked, it's raw, it's Nama. So if you feel like eating raw oysters, make sure that it's Nama. 
Now, this nama is also used in an expression to say that someone is very cheeky or feisty or even lively, like seen here in Sakuna. Next, we have i, seen in ikiru, the verb to live. You might come across this in words like ikinobiru, to continue living, like seen here in Borderlands, while you're trying to survive, even though you're on the brink of death, you are literally extending one's life. Iki here for living and then nobiru for extending, so iki nobiru to extend one's life. Or even like seen here in Xenoblade 2. Iki kaeru, to come back to life. Iki again meaning life, but this time kaeru to come back or to return, so to come back to life. We also have a reading scene here in Dragon Quest XI with umu, to give birth to someone. Like seen here in umare kawari, for rebirth or reincarnation. Here seen in this kunyomi reading of u. Here talking about this boy being the rebirth of the hero in Dragon Quest. Yusha no umare kawari. But it can also just be used as the verb to give birth to something. We also have ha, like seen here in words like haeru, to grow. Now, this is often used when talking about things like grass, plants, or even your beard growing. Like seen here in Okami, where in a story talking about the character's origins, we see a tree literally sprout out from the ground suddenly. It just suddenly grows. Totuzen hairu, to suddenly grow. We can also see it in a variation reading here with mebaeru. This is the verb for to bud or to sprout. The ha being read as ba. As often happens when joined together with another word, the sound bleeds together. So we have mebaeru. Here it's talking about the budding relationship or growing relationship in Persona 4. Kizuna no mebae, the sprouting of your connection with him, showing this growth of your connection. Now, there are two other readings which are quite rare and only appear in one word in the entire 10,000 useful words list, and the first here is Ki, seen in Kiji. This is the word for fabric or dough. First seen here in Animal Crossing talking about the fabric used to make clothing, but it can also be used for dough, like in pizza or cookie dough. The next rare reading here is O, like in the word oitachi, for one's upbringing. Like seen here in the instruction booklet for Final Fantasy XII, describing Fran's upbringing. Oitachi mo, nenne sae mo, fushou na nazo no bubun mo. Her upbringing and even her age are an unknown thing of mystery. Demo eadisu, kimi wa toki doki dare mo inai no ni koe ga kikoe ru koto ga aru daro? Sonna koto nai mo! Demo watashi ni wa wakate ita, ano ko no fushigi na no ryoku. And finally, if we take a look at the Onyomi reading, Shou, like in Isho Kenme. Here, where Aerith's mother or foster mother is saying that Aerith tried her best to hide her powers. Isho Kenme Kakusoutoshiteita. Here, for trying to hide with all of her might. Isho kenme literally is to go all out with one's life. Isho is for one's life, so isho kenme is to just do something the best you can. Yeah. 
クリスタルが武器になったブレイドとははい。今日から皆さんはここで一緒に無人島生活を始めるだなも。The second onyomi reading for this kanji is say. And this reading is used in a whopping 51 different words in the top 10k list. Here seen with the word seikatsu for life, as in daily life, like seen here in Animal Crossing. Se representing life and katsu for activity, so your lively activities, your daily life, as well as appearing in a ton of useful other. The words like gakuse for student. So, if we put all of these readings together and we have a look at the concept of this kanji, isho for one's life, tanjo, birth, seikatsu, one's life in the daily activity sense, nama, live, raw, fresh, ikiru, to live, umu, to give birth, hairu, to grow, to bud or to sprout, and even kiji and oitachi. We can see here that the general common thread that we have with most of these. These words is life, whether giving it, living it, or talking about it. This kanji's key concept could be said to be that of life. Now, on to one of the most common kanji to come across with, with its first kunyomi reading of i, as seen in iku, the verb to go. Like seen here in Star Wars for where do you think you're going? Doko ni iku ki da? This is by far the most commonly seen reading, even though it only appears in four different words in the top 10k because it's such a core verb to use. Going, to go. Iku. We also have a slight variation of Iku, and that is Yuku. This has the same meaning, however, it's slightly more formal and might be seen more often in poems, titles, and more literary contexts. However, it's also used even when a train says that it's heading in a certain direction, right? You would say Iku if you were going yourself, but you might see in a train it says Yuki. For example, Osaka Yuki means heading for Osaka. And it also appears in a slightly non standard reading in the word whereabouts. Tonikaku Hommono no Ohi no Yukue o Sagasanakia. Yukue. Like seen here in Chrono Trigger, where we see Ohi no Yukue, which means the Queen's whereabouts. Sagasanakia. We gotta search for it. So, s a s it's me, Okonaimaska. Ah, Eta. The final reading is seen here in Zone of the Enders in the word okonao for to carry out something or to conduct something. Here, referring to conducting the control explanations. You will often see this verb used when you are doing something in a kind of more formal manner, like you might hold a meeting. Instead of saying you will do a meeting, you will say you will hold a meeting, and so you'd use this okonao for that context. Next, onto the onyomi reading here of ko, like in Kodo, the word for behavior or action. We can see this in Final Fantasy VII Remake with Barrett telling the group that they are free to move about as they please. Jiu Kodo. Mata omaira ka. Koko wa tsuko kinchi da. Kono mae wa tokubetsu da kara na. And we can also see this reading in other words, like for example, tsuko for passage or traffic, like here in Suigurun 2, where passage is blocked off. So they say tsuko kinshi, passage prohibited, or going through is prohibited.
Another Onyomi reading, which is slightly related to the first, is Gyo. And this can actually be used all by itself to mean a row or a line of text, for example. Or literally as a row of people, like here seen in Gyoretsu, a line or queue. Here referring to joining the line to the afterlife. Oira wa zenkoku angyo no tabiyashi. This kanji also has a relatively rare onyomi reading of an, and it only appears in this one word in the entire 10,000 useful word list, and it's quite connected to Japanese culture, and that is the word for pilgrimage in Japanese, angya, like seen here in Orkami, a game which is famous for using older, more rarer Japanese, as it's actually based on Japanese folklore and mythology. So if we look at the concept for this kanji, it's fairly simple. We have simply iku, the verb to go, yuku, the more poetic and literary way of saying iku, yukue, one's whereabouts, or no, for carrying out something or conducting it, kodo, for movement or action, tsuko, for passage or going through, gyoretsu, for a line or a queue, even angya, to go on a pilgrimage. Now in all of these examples, you do generally see this concept of going, moving to do something, engaging in action, right? It has this feeling of going somewhere. Whether going on a pilgrimage, just going somewhere, going to line up, going to do movement, going on some sort of passage or traffic, it definitely seems that the key word here is go. Now for a much more simpler kanji, the kunyomi reading for this kanji is futa, as seen in both the words futatsu for two things, like seen here talking about having two things to do on your mission in Metal Gear Solid, and futari. For two people, like seen here in Persona 4, where there are two yoskes, the normal one and the shadow one. Futari, two people. <sighs> Next, we have the onyomi reading of ni, simply the word for two, as in the number two. Also seen here to express a second or another, like seen here in Nino Kuni, the name of the world that this game is named after. Nino Kuni could be translated as literally the second country or second land, or perhaps even a little bit more clearly seen as another world, showing this world exists as a separate world from the one that we all know, a second world, Nino Kuni. This kanji also has a few non-standard readings to keep your eye out for. Futsuka and Hatsuka, for the words two days and 20 days. Here, the kanji is read differently just in these words, but as they're very common words, be sure to memorize these words by themselves as exceptions. So an incredibly simple kanji to conceptualize here with ni, as the word for two or a second something. Futatsu for two things, and futari for two people, and even futsuka and hatsuka for two days and twenty days. It seems quite simple. This kanji is most often used to express the concept of two. So looking at the two kunyomi readings for this kanji, the first is ma, seen here in 18 different words, and it by itself means space, time, or a pause. And it can appear in many words, for example, hiruma, during the day, mamonaku, before long, and even seen here in Dragon Quest XI, machigai, a mistake or an accident. Generally, this ma is being used to talk about some space, time, or pause, like in our examples with hiruma, right? It's the time during the day, hiru for day, ma, the time, hiruma, during the day. Mamonaku means without 
ma without a pause before long, but sometimes it's not as clear, like machigai, a mistake or an accident. The next Kunyomi reading is Aida, and this is a very common word, even if it only appears in three words in the top 10k. By itself, it can mean either the space between something or the time between something. And this is an incredibly common piece of language that's used in several grammar points in the JLPT as well, like seen here in Mass Effect 2. Neteru aida, while sleeping. So in the space of when he was asleep. So, Next up, we have the Onyomi reading of Kan. And Kan means an interval or period of time, like seen here in the word for one week, Ishu Kan. So here, the interval or period of time is what's set by what comes before it, Ishu, one week, Ishu Kan, one week period. <laughs> The next Onyomi reading for this kanji is Ken, and this reading appears only once in the top 10,000 words, and this is in the word Seken. This however is a fairly common word, as it's the word that we use to talk about the world or society, like seen here in Final Fantasy X, talking about Titus not knowing about the world that he's in. Seken Shirazu, a very common saying to not know about the world. Now, you could look at this conceptually as the first kanji represents society, and ken here is representing the space or the area of society, as in the world that we live in, the society we're a part of. Seken. <laughs> Gen, seen here in the word Ningen, is a variation of the Ken reading, which also appears in just this one word in the top 10,000, and again, this word is a very common and worth learning reading for. Ningen, for human or humankind. And just like before, the Gen is being used to represent the space or group of humans here being represented with nin. So ningen generally is a term that we use to talk about humans, either collectively, like mankind or human being, but it can also be used just to talk about a person. So this kanji is a little bit more complex in gathering a concept for, however, if we take a look at all of the examples, ma for space, time, or a pause, and aida for the space between something, ishukan for one week period, seken for society or the space of society, ningen for the human or humankind, we certainly see this common thread of this interval, this period, this space of something. Whether it's something more abstract, like the space of society or humankind, or even time, or perhaps the physical space between something. Clearly the key word here is space or pause. This next kanji is very simple as it's used to express time. The kunyomi reading, this can be used to express the time something happens, or even when something happens, like seen here with toki. Toki is used after a verb to show when you do that verb. So like in this example, kuru toki, when you come, kuru means come, toki when, when you come, kuru toki, and it's even seen in the word for sometimes, toki toki. Anta nara, kitto tsugu ni mitsukerare ru hazu desu. Sa, kou shiteru aida ni mo, jikan wa sugite iku bakari. Ato, 72 jikan shika arimasen yo. If used with a number, it can show the time of the day, like ichiji, one o'clock. 
as well as the noun for time itself, jikan. Like seen here in Majora's Mask, referring to the 72 hours that you have left. Nanaju ni jikan. Or even to talk about the time or era that one is in, jidai. Like here with Ryuga Gotoku Ishin, with this man talking about the era that you're in, Jidai. So this kanji is quite simple to conceptualize, both G and Toki are readings that are used to express time, whether it's the literal time itself, like 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, or it's the noun for time, like jikan, or referring to when something is done with Toki. Clearly, the concept of this kanji is time. Hi, this First up, ki. Like seen here in the word kini iri, something that you have interest in. This is an incredibly common and useful reading for the kanji, the most useful reading for this kanji by far. You almost see this in every second sentence being used. For example, this incredibly common expression that everyone should know how to say is kiotsukeru or kiotsukete. For example, to be careful. Ki is often used to express one's spirit, mind, or feeling. Kiotsukeru would be to apply your mind to something, as in to be cautious or to be careful. Skeru means to apply, so kiotsukeru, to apply your mind to something, be careful. Kiniiri, this means that your mind has entered something. As in other words, you are interested in something. And even seen here in Yakuza 0, we can see ki being used to show one's intention. Used twice in this scene to show the intention of meeting. Ao ki. Ao to meet. Ki here is the intention to meet. Care. This is used to express a sign, a trace, a feeling of something. Seen first here in the word kehai for an indication, a sign, or a presence of something. Here in Final Fantasy VIII, talking about the presence of enemy soldiers. And also seen in words like samuke, to feel cold, or shikke, being moist, feeling moist or damp. Ke also has a variation, ge. Like seen here in the word yuge for steam or vapor. Like in this very steamy scene here in Persona 4. Yu means hot water. You'll often see this in front of um, onsens to show that it's hot water inside. And with this kanji, with the reading of ge. Now, this kanji often means some sort of spirit. So perhaps a good way to remember this word is like the spirit of hot water. Steam, right? A good visualization to help you remember it. So if we put all of these together, there are some common links with a few exceptions. First, Ke, like in kehai, for indication, sign, or presence of something. Samuke, for feeling cold. Yuge, for steam. Kiniiri, for something you're interested in. Kiyotsukeru, to apply caution to something. And even aoki, to have the intention of meeting. So, 
we can see that generally this kanji is used to express some sort of spirit, disposition or feelings towards something. Whether your feelings of feeling someone is around, your feelings of something being cold, your feelings of being interested in something, or you being feeling inclined to do something or even to be careful of something. Tō, like here in Tales of Vesperia, this is with the word for ten days, tōka, here referring to the ten days that he's been imprisoned for, tō for ten and ka for day. <laughs> the number 10. This is another one of the most simplest kanji to learn as it almost always is used to express the number 10, like seen here in its onyomi reading of ju, 10. So in this example, junen hayai, here we have 10 years too early, an expression to show that you're lacking in skill or experience in something. Juppun, the next onyomi reading means 10 minutes, like seen here in Final Fantasy VIII, where you need to choose the time setting for your mission, and you have a selection of choosing 10 minutes. Now, this kanji does appear in two non standard readings, and this is Hatsuka, 20 days, and Hataji, for 20 years old. This only appears in these words for days and age when it has to do with the number 20, so just remember that these two exceptions exist and then you should be okay for the most part. So we can see quite clearly that in each of these examples, the kanji is always used to express the number 10, ju. Whether 10 years, ju nen, 10 minutes, juppun, or 10 days, toka. And that's it for the next 10 kanji for the JOPT N5. So a huge congratulations, everyone. You are now able to read these kanji, which appear in 570 of the most useful 10,000 words, according to kanshudo.com. This puts your total readings covered in the top 10,000 to 1,460 if you've seen the previous episode. This really highlights just how common the N5 kanji are and how much that you're going to gain from learning these basic kanji in usefulness. Now, while it's true that some of these kanji you need to remember quite a few different readings, just keep in mind that this only really applies to these beginner kanji, as most kanji in the JLPT only have about two or three readings generally. But hopefully this video has helped you gain a greater feel for each of these kanji as we learn through context and the real use of these vocabulary that the kanji are found in. If this video has helped you enjoy learning Japanese, consider becoming a member on Patreon and join us in the Game Gengo Discord community and have fun learning Japanese together. A huge thank you to all of the supporters on the channel and members of the community, and I hope you all continue to enjoy learning Japanese with Game Gengo and video games. As always, see you again next time.